All right, we're going to take a look at the second part of this section, 3.1. We're identifying pairs of lines and angles. And this time we're going to really take a look at the uh, pairs of lines and the angles part. So first we've got to define one of our words here, and that word is going to be the word transversal. And a transversal is going to be a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. Now that word transversal is going to come into play a lot in what we're going to do throughout the rest of this chapter. So let's take a look at one of our diagrams. Now there's going to be angles formed by transversals, and we're going to take a look at four types. Our first two are going to be corresponding angles and alternate interior angles. Now what I want to identify first is my transversal. My transversal is this line right here, T. Now for corresponding angles, I'm going to have in this diagram, I'm going to have four different pairs. One of my pairs is going to be angle 1 along with angle number 5. That's going to be one pair of corresponding angles. Now staying on the same side of the transversal, I'm going to go with angle 3 next. And the corresponding angle with angle 3 is going to be angle number 7. So those are two pairs of corresponding angles. I think you might see a pattern here, and if you do, that's pretty good. Our other pair is going to be angle 2 with angle 6, and angle 4 is going to be paired with angle 8. So those are our four pairs of corresponding angles when we have two lines cut by transversal T. Now moving on to, over to the right hand side where we take a look at alternate interior angles. Now when we take a look at alternate interior, they're going to be on the inside of where that transversal has just cut. So we're going to be taking a look at angles 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now with those, we want to take a look again, we're going to have our transversal T right here, but our alternate interior. Now let's kind of take a look at what this means from a common sense point. The word alternate is going to be on different sides interior is going to be on the inside. So we want different sides of the inside to name the alternate interior angles. So of angles 3, 4, 5, and 6, when I take a look at those, I'm going to take a look at angle 3, and that's going to get paired with angle 6 as alternate interior. Now also angle 4 is going to be paired with angle 5. So there's going to be my two pairs of alternate interior angles when I have transversal T that cuts across these two lines. Now, next we're going to take a look at the other two types of angles formed by transversals. Here we're going to try to identify the alternate exterior angles and the consecutive interior angles. And I think you guys probably will start to pick up on this pretty, pretty quickly. Now, similar to alternate interior, alternate exterior means I've got to be alternating so that's going to be on different sides of my transversal and remember our transversal is line T so I want them to be on different sides now one pair is going to be angle 1 now on the outside that's on the other side of transversal T compared with angle 1 that's going to be angle number Eight. So angles 1 and 8 are one pair of alternate exterior angles, and my other pair is going to be angle 2, and that's going to be paired with angle 7. So those are my two pairs of alternate exterior angles. My last type of angle that's formed when I have transversal T cut across two lines are going to be called consecutive interior angle. And again, I've got that phrase interior, so interior, that's going to mean somewhere on the inside. Now consecutive, consecutive, that's going to mean it's going to be on the same side of my transversal. So I'm going to have angle 3. Now the angle that's on the same side of the transversal as angle 3 is going to be angle 5. Likewise, I could take a look at angle 4, and its consecutive interior angle pair is going to be 6. So those are the four different types of angles that get formed when a transversal cuts, cuts across two lines. So if you think you have the names of these four down, go ahead and try example 2 on your own. See how you do. All right, if you want to go ahead and do that together, then we'll go ahead and get started on that now. So here's what we've got. We've got to identify all pairs of angles of the given type. So let's first identify where our transversal is. So that's going to be this part right here, that line. 
Now the corresponding angles, again, I'm gonna have four pairs of these, one pair, and I'm just gonna kinda of go in order. I'm gonna have angle one, and that's gonna get paired up with angle five. I'm gonna have angle two, that's gonna get paired up with angle six. My next angle pair, I'm gonna have angle number eight, is gonna get paired with angle four, and my last pair is gonna be angle seven, gets paired with angle three. Now the order that I wrote those in doesn't really matter as long as you have the two angles paired together correctly. So I could say angle three and angle seven, or I could write it down as angle seven and angle three. It's totally up to you. You just have to make sure that you name them correctly. Next, we're gonna move on to our alternate interiors. Now our alternate interiors, again, we're gonna have two pairs. So my alternate interior angle, one of them is gonna be angle two, and that's gonna get paired with angle seven in this case. Now my other pair of alternate interiors are gonna be angles four and five. So that's gonna be my other pair of alternate interior angles. My alternate exteriors, I'm gonna have angle one is gonna be paired with angle eight. And then my other pair is gonna be angle three getting paired up with angle six. So, so far those are all three of the different types of angles that get formed by the, our transversal cutting across those two lines. Lastly, we've got to take a look at our consecutive interiors. And remember, consecutive means on the same side of the transversal. So here we're gonna have angle two is gonna get paired up with angle five for consecutive interior. And lastly, we're gonna have angle four get paired up with angle seven as my other pair of consecutive interior angles. So that's it for this piece. If you have all of these down, the rest of everything in this chapter is really going to fall into place for you because there's a lot of uh, identifying these. More times often than not, it's not just going to be three lines. They're going to really crank it up and there's going to be four lines or five lines. So it's really going to be challenging sometimes to rotate a diagram around and, and really see what's going on just because they're going to put a lot in there to try to confuse you. But if you can get this part down, the rest of it, I'm sure you guys will do fine with. All right, we'll see you in class soon. Have a great day.